Uh, welcome back to Bride's Tale 3. Uh, this is um, a continuation of the exploration of the catacombs, or at least an attempt to do so. Um, I've refilled my spell points, and so I guess it's time to start casting spells to get into the dungeon reasonably. I'm kind of, um, in a way, treading water because I'm pretty leery of uh, going on to the next dungeon level without the um, without the new spells uh, from leveling up that um, we haven't done yet. You know, basically without hitting level 13, basically or approximately, I I feel like we're just going to have a lot of random deaths. Uh, although on the flip side, the second half of the Scarabray Starter Dungeon does give more experience. Not bothering to use a bard song yet because I don't know. I'm lazy. There's a funny thing about the way that um, adjusting the speed of combat works. Uh, every other step makes it scroll faster, but doesn't adjust the time it pauses on each item at all. So you have this weird feeling of it, it moves faster, but it feels slower because it stops for longer, perceptually at least. I don't know, I haven't really timed it. But I'm not at a point yet where um, I want to ignore what's going on in combat, because sometimes I get hit for significant damage, like there. And I don't have a huge hit point buffer, so... Uh, getting hit by the opponents can mean I have to really do something about it. Poison blades, plural. I just had the wrong party member try to disarm it. Oh my goodness, everyone's going to get poisoned. Oh, I guess not. If you have the right one... Shit. So, um... Pardon me. Uh... I thought it was, um, first attempt, I thought it would be like first attempt for the thief would, or the rogue would, uh, not set it off if I had the right spell name, but nope. I used up my attempt with a random mage trying to disarm a trap, just because I pressed the wrong key. Anyway, it wasn't that bad. Poison blades, I think, can poison everyone. 
At least he did on the Amiga, so I don't know whether that's a bug or what. Okay. Slash Beasts and Slash Beasts. I think I'm right here. I have to say I'm pretty excited about this playthrough for perhaps the dumbest reason. Um, when I played the Apple II version, it had some corrupted graphics. There were certain enemies where that never showed me the valid picture. Uh, I think overall in the game... Oh, I'm about to hit a trap. There maybe have been like three images, but I guess it could have been all the same corrupted image. I don't know. I think there were more corruptions on Dungeon Disk B or Side B. Might have been the same corruptions or some of the same monsters, but more of them corrupted. I don't. I don't know for sure. But uh. I'm pretty sure as a result there's at least some monsters I've never seen. Never seen. Okay, so zooming out, uh where do I want to explore on on this map? I feel like I'd like to knock out this little spot, but I don't want to walk through all this anti magic this magic drain to do so. So, um Maybe I'll start by exploring this way. Um, oh wait, let me, uh, if I'm going to attack these, I'm going to use my ranged weapons. There's no point in just doing nothing. Well, it's faster. Oh, that's right, I have to, or I should figure that ring out. Wow, those those range damage attacks are terrible. Two damage, three damage. I mean, look, I when I hit the hand hand 32. So uh, over 10 times as much. Okay, I should turn on the bard song soon. I think I'm tearish. Like given this vertical line of silent zones, I kind of want to figure out whether this spot is a silent zone. And that's where I am right now, so... And it is not. Okay. Well, I learned something. Okay, so now I'm in this darkness. Is there really an anti-magic zone one to the south? Maybe not.
Okay. I think I'm at the point of harmonic gems now where I'm going to start using them even when stuff hasn't hit the fan. Okay, you are not the one that has the gem. Who has the gem? Hot Blossom? Yeah, you have everything. Trade that off to a spellcaster who could use it. I assume this is a shield ring. I don't know if there are any other rings that drop this early. It's a shield ring. Okay. Uh, I think... My paladin maybe doesn't have a shield ring? No, she does. Who doesn't have... My monk with the incredible armor class doesn't have... And... My rogue doesn't have... I'm gonna give it to the rogue. Even though, theoretically... Rogue will not get attacked because it always will be hiding. But worst if the worst thing happens and someone dies, she'll be in, in range. And that monk with eleven minus eleven armor class is really not threatened. Yeah, there's no This is not an anti-magic spot. What happened that confused me. But this is okay, that's what happened. confusing the Shadow Drifters and the Phantoms because they use the same image. A Mithril Helm. That sounds like an upgrade. choice for doors, or perhaps last choice, whatever, the one I don't want. This is definitely a hit point drain zone. Uh, 
Uh, zooming out, what would this diagonal line do if it continued all the way across? It would end up here. Okay. I'm starting to get the feeling that there's a big red X. Which makes me wonder... Why? Like, what's the middle of the X? Oh, that Mithril Helm I've already forgotten about. Let's... who has it? You do. Um, Grisnak. But, for reasons I haven't bothered to investigate, you have a better armor class than the Paladin. And so you're going to hand it over. Uh, well, one reason is my paladin has a shitty shield. Buckler. So what do we got? Buckler, gauntlets, ritual plate, shield ring, ritual helm. Where's Nak has? Uh, normal helm. An unidentified shield, which was probably a tower shield that I never was able to identify. So that's probably the real difference. Uh, but that doesn't explain for two points. Do you have a dexterity discrepancy? Yeah, dexterity 10. Okay. Now I know why. Checking all the walls. Uh, casting Mystic Shield again. It fell off again. So short. Okay, so this is just a little... It's sort of annoying that they put this two-point terrain where you have to turn and lose, get hit again by it. Where's... Uh, where's the thing to drink from? I guess I used it up. I was sort of saving that... Uh, and drink wineskin because I don't think I'm going to get another one that big. But now that I'm stuck in the dungeon and out of booze, and down a bunch of health, So I don't know why, but um, apparently the monsters are much more likely to try to damage the people in the front, or at least more likely, than ones further back. So having your first party member have the best armor really matters. Best armor in most hit points, you know, everything like that. check out what the auto map says so far. Does it give me any hints that are not already obvious from what I've seen? I feel like using Mystic Shield um, and then 
just waiting for my fighters to kill the enemy is more magic point efficient than not casting mystic shield and dealing with the extra damage I take. Oh, I haven't moved my cursor. Mithril arrows, not exciting. North is a wall, and south is a door. I'm gonna try south. This is probably gonna be a hit point drain. Yep. Probably this square to the north is going to be hit paint drain as well. That was one of those modern computer conveniences that didn't happen. I held down the arrow key and expected it to auto repeat, but I guess, um, I don't know. I mean, I guess they had to write their own keyboard routines. They're dealing with the hardware themselves, and they didn't bother to implement auto-repeat. Maybe that wasn't a thing then, or maybe it just wasn't considered important enough. In a modern world, like the operating system is dealing with that keyboard, and if I hold down a key, I expect it to just repeat. Come on, everyone repel? No. Oh, oh. He only cast a spell on one of us. I was like thinking it was a group spell for some reason. I think I've gone way past the level up target for level 10. Let's look at a character. Let's make sure I'm right about that because. Yeah. Level 10 is not going to be an exciting level, which is why I am so far not dealing with the fact that I'm over the target. Oh, by the way, I um, adjusted the color of the grid. I made the background lines... I think it was labeled intensity, but I made them light more faint. Which means it's now easy to see uh, where walls have been put, even on the thick lines. It's a small quality of life improvement, but I'm happy about it. If I remember correctly, oh, I don't remember. There's like a message here, and this is a special room, something like that. This is from my Amiga playthrough, where I got just a little bit further than this. So this is a darkness square, turning north, 
there's our there's our message that's like half loaded because it's busy loading a fight. That's what I remember from that message. Something about a magnetic... Maybe it's warning about a spinner? I don't remember. There seems seems, not is, to be an odd magnetic disturbance near. Okay. That just turned off my light spell immediately, but it doesn't say darkness. Maybe it's darkness, but the message cancels the darkness message. Okay, so to the east, I just tried to move without kicking, so there's a wall or a door. And if I kick, you go through, so it must be a door. Okay, and this is definitely a spinner. Isn't that nice of them? They put they put a um, a rotation thing in a little closet where it's hard to get out again. Well, at least it's not confusing. When I like. Doesn't it kind of look like there's a gap between this and this? I mean, I guess there's no wall there, but just the... It's hard to read this. It makes it feel like you've missed a spot when you haven't. Anyway, uh... Back in that room. Out to the north. And there's darkness there, too. I guess maybe there's another wall... Vertical wall of darkness here. To the right. I'm not. I'm, there's no darkness here, but uh, I think it's a dead end, so I'm not gonna do a light spell. I'm just going to try the three directions. Oh, that one went through. So that means there's a door here, and I could tell I went through immediately because I hit I hit point train. Uh, and if I believe this map. Whoop! I don't. I didn't mean to make that march that way. If I believe this map, these two are walls, which means I should turn right and move forward. Okay. And now I can um, afford. Oh, let's use a gem. Refill my spell points. Enter. I don't know. I, th I don't know if it fills you entirely or gives you a lot. Well, I guess we'll find out later when I have a lot more spell points. So our perception. My my perception of. Um, can I not use the enter? Maybe I was pressing shift instead or something. Um, my, so my placement of these walls is accurate. Which is too bad. Because
because uh, right now I'm gonna have to like go through the hit point drain again. And uh, through darkness again, no matter which way I go. Okay, so back through the darkness. down here and there. Um, I should at least step forward to finish that spot. Here's one of the red fields I dropped by accident. I always feel like the way they wrote the number sign for the number of uses makes it seem like like it's a label, like this is Firehorn number nine. Demon Gari are kind of tough. So where's the X? X is here. I feel like I'm going to be let down. And it's not going to be anything interesting at that point. But if I were designing the game, I would totally put something interesting there. I think I'm going to find that that item I just picked up is another gem. Finish that pot later. I thought they'd be dying by now. There's one dead. I feel like, I, I don't know if I would uh, have more fun if I knew how many hit points they had, or if I have more fun by sort of trying to guess how many they have by watching what happens, getting a sense over time of how strong a particular enemy is and trying to re remember that knowledge and reuse it later. Feels like kind of a traditional part of this game style. Of course it it's sort of based on the idea of playing one game a whole lot, which is uh definitely an expected part of playing these old games. It slices many ways. Um uh that you would have enough kind of focus to do all this mapping, that you would spend all this time in one thing, but also that 
um, you would be interested to try to figure stuff out. Because, well, you know, were you doing anything else? Not if you didn't have any other games. It's important to understand, like, you probably bought one with, uh, your, you know, maybe you had a newspaper route or something. Wait, why is there darkness here? Oh, I'm standing here and I'm trying to go south of this wall. So it's just telling me darkness again because I didn't go, go anywhere. So here, here. Uh, I guess now it's up this way. I think I'm even gonna turn on the light. I'm just gonna navigate blind. Yeah, there's the message. Turn right. North is um really a wall. If I still one, it would make a noise when you kicked a wall. It would go like, Ding, and you could listen for it, and that use it for mapping. It does not seem to be present here. At least it made that noise on C64. I think it made a noise on Apple too, but in the like PC and Amiga versions of Bard's Tale 1, it, it, there was not a clear noise. And it made mapping harder and it felt like a mistake. I just feel like the 8 bit versions are the real versions and the other versions are. Uh, wannabes? I don't know. Not the intended experience. I'm obviously in a hit point drain. Now I'm in a darkness and hit point drain. And There's a wall there anyway. Okay, I'm finally out of that stuff. Check what I thought. Yep. Just... So, wall there. Uh, door in the north and then door in the south after it. Oh, wait, that was too far. Door in the south after it by one. And in case I'm dumb, I can double check. Oh, of course. In my map, I have all this information retained. Uh, on the auto map, it went away because I left the dungeon. Mm. Where do I want to continue exploring? I guess I should finish this and then come back. the wrong key instead of kick. get to hit the get an extra tick of the hit point drain
Okay, so some of my party members are down to single digits. So time to healing song it up. So I guess um, the song is doing three more per usage, which means um, it's already better than the first level of dungeon, which was two more per usage. In later dungeons, it'll be four more per usage. That's how the bard song scales. So expect this to be another hit point drain right in front of us. And it was not? Or it was. It was. It's just that this trap message is making it hard to read. Because everyone took even two damage except for Lady Oak Shield, which took three damage, probably from the trap. She took one. This trap was not impressive. Uh, I don't know which way to turn. I'm going to ask Automap. Automap seems to suggest that to the right is open. Yep. So I assume this is going to be darkness. And this is going to be hit point drain. Why can't I use that? Do I lack a bow? I have arrows and no bow. I mean, I guess there's the point that the firehorn's more effective than a bow anyway, so why do I have them? there's a wall there, there's nothing to walk through to, I might as well go around and not have to make a turn in the hit point drain zone. So let's... That's what I did. Oh, this makes me feel bad that I went through here and never touched this square. step forward there, but um, I did. Press to enter, which is one way to say you want to go forward. This 
is a mistake. At some point, I um. Oh no, it is marked in. It's just hard to see. This hatched business means I stepped there. I thought I'd put a trap and never actually moved. Marked that I'd been there. Which is what these hatchings are. If you didn't notice, that's the um the footprints feature. It's really useful if you have a game supporting their game link thing where you run certain games in a modified DOS box and it automatically can fill in the map for you or at least some parts of it. But uh, I'm not a big fan of the DOS as a gaming environment as compared to some of the other platforms. It had its moments, um, especially in the sort of 1994 on to around, you know, 98 or whenever when Windows became the platform for gaming. Maybe 93 on is more accurate. But before around 93 or so, when DOS games didn't really have reasonable sound, um, I just, and sometimes, you know, you'd have like these games that are crying out for a mouse that didn't have a mouse support. It's even earlier, of course. So getting to here apparently involves uh, this way, like this. That is the way I'm going to go because, um, I don't know, it's sort of a dead end. Okay. What I think I just found is this is actually a spinner that I maybe didn't know, note, I didn't take note of before. It's really frustrating having a spinner next to two hit point drain spots. Oh, well this wasn't the hit point drain, this is the explosion to the north. So we got explosion, trap, drain, drain. This hit point, this spinner sucks. finally went through the right door. Well, that makes me want to not go back that way. I um, guess I don't have to. I could head down through here. And what did we find for all that effort? 
a pointless dead end and a fight. How did I hit three times for 11 damage? That is some crap. I need better weapons. This makes me wish I'd rolled more monks. Although my monk just did 14 damage with three attacks. I'm just on some sort of bad luck binge. Okay, so what do we got left in this dungeon? This little bit here. And this tiny bit here. And this little strip over here, which is, for my luck, it's going to have a wall in it. And it's going to be two bits. Um, should I suck up and go back through this? I feel like I should as much as I hate the idea. Okay. Um, Mage Flame. The crappiest light spell I got. Cheapest, too, which is why I'm using it. I guess I resisted it, or it failed or something. Okay. Hit point drain and spin a room. Pray for good luck. Uh, I guess that's good enough. Okay. Where I ended up was here. I'm going to go into the darkness, turn left, more darkness, turn right, <laughs> my, my magic compass turns off, and it's loading a fight. I don't know whether that means um, fights in this closet, or I left the closet, and somewhere else I'm having the fight. Find out soon. Disarm five. Crazy cloud. Does it ever work? No, it pretty much always sets it off. I don't know what that's about. I think I found some case where it wanted a case sensitively entered. Okay, there's a wall there, so this is a uh, separate. Okay, I managed to get through the spinner zone up to up here, and I'm going to 
walk through some explosions and take some damage, so before I do that... I need some healing. Full? Yeah, we are. Okay. Oh, why did I cast Mage Flame? Because there's darkness right here. I'm dumb. So I stepped here. Oh, I was gonna say there's no darkness message, but that's because they were loading a fight. Which ones of these are weaker? I think that the Vile Creepers are weak. So I'll have my hand-to-hand -hand people attack the Gord Rulers and use the Flame Firehorn on the Vile Creepers. Maybe they're all weak. I'm going to flip-flop because there's four more of the Gord Rulers and that's four and Firehorn against more is a chance of killing more. Fairly simple logic. Just a um, just a little sort of dead end there that I never bothered to explore. Uh, now I want to go here to check out this room. Uh, this is the path. Two more. One more explosion. And the silence. Oh, it's the middle of fight. Um, fight the singleton. Okay, so. I got the sound of silence, so that means I know I actually went here like I meant to. And now I've gotten the hit point drain, so I know I'm here like I meant to be. And now I hit the trap, so I know I'm at this trap like I meant to be. And I'm pretty sure I just went in here. Oh, so there's some detail in this space. There's like a wall here. I should turn on the lights. Yep, hit point drain like I expected. I suppose all of this would be somewhat more exciting if I hadn't already found the word. The um, solution to the dungeon. So you'd think that like the word would be in this X, but down this, at this corner it doesn't feel like it has much to do with the rest of the dungeon. Oh well.
Yeah, I give I give this level maybe a C minus for satisfaction. I mean, I kind of have some satisfaction that I finished mapping it. Uh, my memory was kind of skip it; it's not worth it, which is pretty much true. But that I persevered feels kind of good. And this is going to be another hit point drain right in front of me. So, my memory of navigating this is I lost more health than I expected, and I just didn't notice that one. So I'm going to guess that that's... I'm also guessing these are hit magic point drain, but not. I just don't care enough to fill it in. So, uh, I don't care about fighting that Dark Priest. I'm just going to choose to not do it. Time for more, more healing action. Okay, so how do we get to this zone? There's a... This is this is actually not marked as a wall. You can see these are these are walls. If it was a wall, it would be like this. I guess it's still with the red on the blue, it makes it darker and it's a little bit harder to see that there's no wall there. Okay, so if there's no wall here or here, which who knows because it was darker before and I may not have realized I failed to draw some walls. Then simply going up, left, down, and across gets me there. And I do remember going from, or, yeah, going from this area and ending up here. So it must go through. light. Okay, so I'm here, double north, and then turn west. Uh, forward, through the door, south, and then west again. Okay, we're going to take a hit to our spell points. Well, first we're going to get attacked. I don't think I've ever had the Foul Stalkers use their breath weapon before. Or if they did, it didn't do any real damage, so I didn't notice. 
I guess I got lucky. Sometimes uh, they have, however, the same monster at two different difficulty levels. Like you have, you'll encounter the same name of a monster later and it's not the same really. It's like a harder version. Okay. I thought I was about to charge the last door, but I got ambushed. I find something satisfying about being almost done with that fire horn and having it go away. When you use up a an item like um like a fire horn with its three charges left, it just vanishes. It doesn't exist anymore. Or at least it doesn't exist in your inventory anymore. So. New ground, and that's it. Done with this dungeon. Whoop, didn't go that way. Now to get out. Um, I think I'm gonna just use Sir Robin's tune and not care that I'm gonna lose spell points and go this way. It's a one-way wall. See this half line? That is okay. Well, uh, here's where you get bitten by a less than complete map. Okay, that's that's fine. Okay, run away. Um, I can somehow express um, I'm gonna run from every fight Mr. Game so could you just not spend my time loading them I'm 
sort of feeling a little pressure to kind of run out because it's a little silly, but I'm out of spell points and saving the harmonic gems would be nice. If I run out of light, um, it might be too tedious. So I'm really just sort of making a race against having to expend a little more resources. But hey, it creates some internal tension in my mind. I get to feel that it's somehow exciting about whether I can get out in time or not. There's also the slight risk that I'm walking through traps, just setting them off, or daring the game to hurt me with them, sort of, which I really should not do later. But at this point, the traps are not very bad. They're like, a couple people are poisoned, you took a little damage. And we're out. Okay. So, the first thing to do is obviously save the game. You can save the game anywhere, and not even necessarily using save states. Uh, the, you can just hit save, it goes insert your character disk, and updates your one save to wherever you are. Which is nice. But it takes time, and you have to flop, switch floppy disks, and Oh, I kind of said I was going to save, and I didn't. Mm. I kind of would like it if I just told you game saved, but I suppose you just trust the floppy just turned off. And it let me play again, so I'm sa I, my game is saved. So let's advance the characters, or at least see if we can. I'm pretty sure we can. Advancement. Uh, Grisnok gets luck. Repelling spells more. Next level is in 13,000, which is where we were before this adventure started, this session started. Um, so... Similar distance to level 11 as to where we just were. More luck gained for my paladin. Dexterity for the monk because he doesn't have, she doesn't have enough armor class. Uh, the bard gets luck. Luck is nice. It's not dying to enemy spells. Um, Rogue gets luck. Elendor, our conjurer, gets strength, which is garbage, and our magician is going to get constitution, which is actually pretty good. And I'm pretty sure we didn't gain spells, so... Uh, the, you know, that, that level mainly got us a little bit better saving throws. Uh, even better if our lucks got um, improved at certain key thresholds. I think basically, I think it's like every point of luck past 14 is worth something. So Grisnak getting luck from 9 to 10 didn't actually help me, except that it's closer to luck being 14. Whereas for oh, and she had five luck. Okay, well that's not that's not um, super exciting. Look at the the. the I, I accepted some shit luck scores. Okay, Chantrell actually had her luck go into a sort of useful zone. Anyway, but leveling up gives you better saving throws too, as well as getting your luck improved. Um, 
so I guess I'm gonna just stop here. We can assume that I'm gonna refill my spell points off camera, probably do a little inventory management, and then the next step will be going to the second dungeon under the Mad God's Temple.